into factors affecting rates of reaction, which is where that table will come in. So we'll just wait. So do we take all Right, remember a theory in science isn't just something that's made up. A theory in science refers to a way of describing phenomena. Phenomena is a fancy word of saying things that happen, right? A way of describing things that happen that so far no other evidence has gone against, right? Slightly different to law. Law is a bit different. Laws generally can't be broken. But, oh, yes, I am. Oh. Two things crashing together. We want to define the term rate of reaction. Describe collision theory in terms of movement of particles whose average kinetic energy increases as temperature increases. Outline the requirements of collision for a successful reaction and the next part, don't worry about. That's extension. Okay. So rate of reaction is described as being the change in something, whether it be concentration, whether it be mass, right? over time. If you've done methods, or if you've done physics and looked at, right, velocity, physics, or speed is distance over time. Acceleration is velocity over time. So the rate of something is the amount in which something changes over time. In the case of chemistry, rate of reactions, how much concentration or mass, because they're related things, right, is lost or gained over time. So products are obviously gained over time, so the rate would be positive. The rate would obviously be negative for reactants because we're losing reactants over time. Collision theory. Increases the temperature, right? Kinetic energy of particles, right? We use the term particle as a broad term to describe any small bit of matter in chemistry. So particles, we could be referring to atoms, we could be referring to ions, we could be referring to gases, we could be referring to, um, what did I say, ions, elements, we could be referring to compounds, that, right, any small, tiny unit of matter. As you increase the temperature, you're increasing the kinetic energy of the particles. Now, don't worry too much about this graph. This will make a lot more sense if you go into IB in particular or Year 12 Chemistry in BCE. It's called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. I'm not expecting you to know that. All it is, is we've got a distribution of matter. So right now, some of you are typing like crazy. You're up here. There's a few of you moving at a really quick velocity. Some of you are asleep in this classroom. Right, so you're down here. Most of you are somewhere in between. So most students are at this peak here, right? You're focused, you're typing at a moderate speed, right? If I suddenly bring in a <laughs> slab of Red Bull, give you all the Red Bull in class, your energy's gonna increase, right? Bit of caffeine, bit of sugar, energy's gonna increase, it shifts the distribution. Those of you who have a Red Bull every morning, the effect is going to be less, so you're going to shift less. Yeah. Point B is that the total number of particles in the room doesn't change, the energy shifts. So more, more students with your Red Bull are going to have that little bit more energy. Yeah. It's the same thing in a reaction as, as I increase the temperature, I increase the kinetic energy of the particles. There are two requirements for a reaction to occur. One is adequate activation energy. So we need to kickstart a reaction. Right? A bonfire doesn't happen unless I light a match. Right? I've got all the fuel there. I've got the oxygen there in the atmosphere. But nothing will happen until I give it a bit of energy. Yeah? But that reaction is kickstarted with a bit of fire. Maybe a tiny bit of petrol as well. Don't recommend. Right? And then what happens is that in a bonfire, that is perpetuated because I'm breaking apart bonds within the wood. Yeah, that releases energy. That energy is enough to then break more bonds within other parts of the wood until all the wood is burnt out and I'm left with ash. Right? 
So activation energy is the amount of energy required to kickstart a reaction. The second thing is I need correct orientation for a successful reaction. Okay? Right. I'm going to pause it here and look at... Reversible arrows, right, refers to... Thank you. Tension back here. Yeah. Not all reactions have a full arrow. Some are reversible. We'll worry about that more next year. Okay. Don't need to know about equilibrium. So just, just appreciate that not all reactions are one way. If I burn something, it's a bit hard to unburn it. If I cook an egg, it's a bit hard to uncook an egg. Right? But some reactions, I can manipulate them in such a way that the reaction will go in reverse. So take an example of photosynthesis. It takes carbon dioxide and water from the atmosphere to produce glucose. We eat the glucose, we breathe in oxygen, and we produce carbon dioxide and water back. That is a reversible reaction. Okay? Sort of. It's two separate reactions, but I'm trying to highlight the point. So that's it in terms of collision theory. Right, let's move on and talk about factors affecting rates of reaction. So this is where our two by two tables come in. Uh, we'll see where we get to. Yeah? Hopefully. I'll give you some time. Factors affecting rate. Four factors. Temperature, surface area, concentration. Yep, there's your four things in the box. Temperature, surface area, concentration, and catalyst. Describe the effect of a catalyst. That will come under catalysts. No, the enzymes are organic catalysts. Again, that's just a tagline. You might need to know that more for biology. So, there's your four headings. Temperature, surface area, concentration, and catalyst. Concentration. So our reason for chemical manufacturers like to increase the rate of reaction. Large amounts of material requires manufacturers to quickly meet demand. For example, 231 million tonnes of sulfuric acid is required globally. Goes largely into fertilisers, cleaning products, dyes, right? and also used in other synthesis of drugs, esters, compounds that smell, perfumes, and so on. Massive, massive industry. How do you get it? Um, you get sulfates in rock. So things like volcanic rock will be high in sulfur. And then you oxidize the sulfur to get, eventually get sulfuric acid. Uh, good question. We look at other other means. And so next year, green chemistry is coming back into the year 11 course for VCE, right? And we'll learn about green chemistry principles where we can use enzymes and other means, biological means that aren't reliant on primary industries. Temperature as, des as described. Increasing the temperature increases the average kinetic energy of all molecules. Watch my amazing there we go oh look at that okay so shift the distribution across here just an arbitrary line i'm indicating so the the axis here is number of particles and amount of energy so as i increase the temperature i shift the distribution here is my activation energy right that sufficient amount of energy required for the reaction to occur what do I notice? I notice I have a greater area under that curve, so more particles are travelling at that sufficient energy to get me my successful collision. The reverse is also true. Yeah? So if I cool things down, yeah, if I reduce the temperature, I decrease the amount of particles above the activation energy. 
that decreases the frequency of successful collisions, that decreases the rate of reaction. And that's why we have fridges. Fridges slow down the fermentation and the oxidation of food so that food stays fresh for longer. Oh, no. Surface area. Decreasing particle size increases the total area. So if I look at taking a one by one by one square, my volume of that object, let's say this is in meters, would be one by one by one, which is one cubic meters. Yeah? In a cube, how many surfaces do I have? I've got six surfaces. So my total surface area is six surfaces times one by one meter is six meters squared. Make sense? Yeah. Right. If I cut this cube in half, in half, in half, right? How many cubes do I have? Eight. So eight cubes. So I've got eight cubes. Each cube is a half a meter by half a meter by half a meter. What's my total volume? Half of a half is? Half of that? Eight. Times eight? One. So my volume hasn't changed. Make sense? All I've done is cut it into smaller pieces. Yeah? yeah. What's the effect of my total surface area? I've now got eight cubes. Each cube has got six faces. Each face is a half by a half metre. Half of a half is? Quarter. What's a quarter times eight? Two. What's two times six? Twelve. Notice that my total surface area has doubled. Yes? Yeah? So the smaller the particle, the greater the available surface area for an interaction to occur. Yeah? So now, temperature relates to energy. Surface area links with successful orientation. Yeah? So, increase surface area increases um, chance of successful orientation increases frequency of successful collisions increases rate of reaction. Next up. Concentration has the same effect as surface area. It relates to orientation. I don't know if you can quite see that. This is um, a reaction of what's called sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid. As I react them, notice how this one will go first. So I've got highly concentrated Na2SO3. It goes first and disappears. Then this one disappears. Then this one disappears after time. So the more concentrated something happens, the uh, faster the rate of reaction. So increasing concentration. Right, increases the number of particles <coughs> per unit of volume. This increases the number of collisions. Right, increases the frequency of successful collisions, which increases the rate of reaction. Last, yeah. Pressure is much the same, right? Pressure is the same thing as concentration. It's increasing the concentration of gases, right? So if we're looking at gaseous reactions, by decreasing volume, we're increasing the concentration of a gas. And works the same way. Won't worry about extension. Lastly, catalysts. No. Don't worry about pressure. It has the same effect as concentration. Yeah? And it's only a pressure by a decrease in volume. Catalysts decrease the activation energy by providing an alternative reaction pathway. 
They're not consumed. They're not used in the reaction. 